Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 1.10. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. Same as before, when we start working in SOLIDWORKS, we need to ensure that we are using the same unit of measurement. Now, looking at this question, we have different views shown in this question. We have the front view with some information shown in it. And we also have view AA, which is looking at this geometry from the top view on the angle plane. There are three hints provided in this question. Uh, number one and two are kind of making sense. It's just easy to understand from the geometry. They're basically saying that the holes you see in this geometry are centered. We have a 22 millimeter hole here on the flanges and we have 25 millimeter hole here in the front view. They're all centered in a geometry. Hint number three is important and it's kind of helpful. They're saying that the thickness of the geometry is same everywhere and it's typical 10 millimeter. You can see here that we have the thickness and thickness is shown with typical, which means that basically this thickness will be consistent in the geometry and they are also providing that as a hint. So with all this information, now let's go to SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. Okay, so first step is to check unit of measurement and here on the right corner you can see that I have millimeter gram second as unit of measurement. So we are good to go. Now start with modeling this part. I prefer to focus on the front view. And to do this, I'm going to click on a sketch, choose a sketch, and I'm going to choose the front plane. And here on the front plane, I will start making the main flange of the geometry or the big flange. In order to do this, I'm going to start with the hole that we have in the geometry and a curved section. To do this, I'm going to click on the circle command and here, right, on top of the origin of the geometry, I'm going to make one circle. If you look at the geometry, this circle is inside another circle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make another circle as well. Now let's dimension these circles. We know that the diameter of the inner circle should be 25 millimeters. So I click on this circle and the dimension is 25 millimeter. Also the radius of the outer circle is 20 millimeter. In other words, the diameter of that circle is 40 millimeters. So I click on the outer circle and I'm going to choose 40 millimeter. Okay. Now, looking at the geometry, the geometry is kind of symmetric and we can see that the hole should be exactly aligned with origin of the geometry. So what I'm going to do, I hit escape to cancel dimensioning, I click on center of the holes, hold control, and I click on center of the geometry or origin of the geometry. And here from the left menu, I'm going to choose vertical relationship. Now, the next step is that we need two tangent line to this circle, to the outer circle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the line command and I'm going to draw a line here. You can see by default the line that I'm drawing here is tangent to the outer circle and that's actually what we want. So when I click OK you can see that we have coincident relationship and we also have tangent relationship. If you're not seeing the tangent relationship you can always add it later. Let's click on line command and then make another line here. So I make this line and again, I have tangent relationship and I have coincident relationship. The important point here is that the coincident points should be on a horizontal line. So what I'm going to do, I click on right point, hold control, I click on left point and from the menu that I have here, I'm going to choose horizontal. And now you can see both points are on the horizontal line. Another piece of information that we have here is the angle between these two lines. From the front view, we can see that the angle between these two lines should be 35 degrees. So what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to click on a smart dimension, choose left line, and then I'm going to choose right line. And then here for the angle, I'm going to define 35 degree angle. We also know that the end point, this point, and this point should be on a horizontal line. So what I'm going to do, I click on the left point, I hold control, I click on the right point, and then again, from the options I have, I'm going to choose horizontal relationship. Okay, good. Next step is to define the distance between the center point of the holes and origin of the geometry. So what I'm going to do, I click on a smart dimension, I choose center of this hole, and I choose center of geometry. And this distance, according to the drawing, should be 45 millimeters. So I click OK, and I choose 45 millimeter. OK, awesome. Now you see most of the points that we have here are black, which means they are fully defined, except two points. Those two points are these end points, because we don't know where exactly they should be located. If I click on this point, and I hold clicking on it, I can move it, basically, which means that the exact location is not known. So now what we need, we need two more lines. We need one line going from origin to this point, and we need another line going from origin to this point. As I mentioned, because we don't know a relationship between this line and this line, now you can see the two lines that we added are kind of shown with blue, which means they are not fully defined. Now, the important question is, how can we make this geometry fully defined? Um, let's take a look at the question and see if we can find other information that we can potentially use to make the geometry fully defined. As you can see here, we used 45 millimeter distance, we used radius and diameter, the thickness is not really important here. We use the angle, and this distance is also not important. So in the front view, I'm not seeing anything that can help me to make the geometry fully defined. And if I look at the top view, or view AA, you can see that we have some information about other flanges. We have the height of those flanges. But again, no information regarding the relationship between the bottom line and the tangent line on the side. So Again, this is one of those circumstances that I believe the information that we have in this question is not sufficient. If you remember, in other questions that we tried to solve in this uh, practice problems, I, I think it was question 1.6, we made an assumption and we continued solving the question because we didn't find information in a question that can help us to make the geometry fully defined. And I believe this is the same case here. Basically, when I'm looking at this geometry, I don't see any sort of information that can help me to make the geometry fully defined. And that's why we're seeing those two lines with a blue color. So here, the question is, what sort of assumption can we make? When I'm looking at this geometry, I think one assumption that we can make is basically considering the tangent line to be perpendicular to the bottom lines. I know it's not perfect, but again, this is a solution to proceed solving this question. Otherwise, we are stuck. So let's go ahead with this assumption and see if we can find the correct answer or not. So here, as I mentioned, um, right now, we don't know anything regarding the relationship between a blue line and a black line. We don't know anything about the angle. So what I'm going to do, I click on this line. I hold control, I click on the tangent line, and here I'm going to assume these two lines are perpendicular. So I'm going to choose this constraint. And now you can see the geometry is fully defined. Again, you can have your own assumption. And if you believe there is a point in a question that I missed, please leave a comment and let me know. But I try to find any useful information that can help me to make this geometry fully defined. And because I couldn't find it, I decided to go ahead with this assumption. So now, with this assumption, we have a fully defined geometry. Next step is to use extruded bus feature and make this geometry like a 3D geometry. So let's click on Feature tab, go to Extruded Bus, and now SolidWorks asks us to choose the contour. I'm going to choose this contour, 
and this contour and the thickness according to front view that we see should be 10 millimeters so we have 10 millimeter thickness so we click on OK and now we have the first part built now the next step is to make the flange section to make the flange section I'm going to switch the plane I'm working on so to do this I click on a sketch I click on a sketch command and here I'm going to rotate the geometry and I'm going to choose this right surface now the right surface is active so we can make our 2d sketch on it so what I'm going to do I click on line command from a sketch tab and here I choose a point it goes straight up and here I need a circle because it's a flange so I'm gonna click on circle command I make one circle here and the second one also should be like this okay so I have the circle and again after that I'm gonna click on line command I go back to here and then I'm gonna close this loop okay so now I have one of the flanges modeled let's dimension this flange to do this I'm gonna click on a smart dimension the whole size should be 22 millimeters so I'm gonna use smart dimension and then 22 millimeter for the whole size and the outer circle must have a radius of 18 so that means the diameter of this circle should be 18 times 2 equal to 36 millimeter now another information that I have is the distance between the bottom surface this surface and a center of the circle should be 32 millimeters so I'm gonna click on circle then I click on this bottom surface and this distance should be 32 millimeter and finally you can see that we have tangent relationship here this line should be always tangent to the circle this line should be always tangent to the circle as well so what I'm gonna do I click on a line I hold control I click on a circle and I'm gonna choose tangent relationship okay okay so now we have the flange but you can see it's blue we need another constraint to make this geometry fully defined you can see in a front view that the distance between the origin of the geometry this red arrow and this point should be 20 millimeters so what I'm gonna do I click on a smart dimension I choose origin of the geometry I choose this point and the distance should be 20 millimeter and now you can see the geometry is fully black which means that it's fully defined and it's ready for the extrusion in order to extrude this part what I'm gonna do I click on feature tab and then I click on extruded bus and then here I'm gonna choose this contour, this contour, and this contour. Now, looking at the geometry in a question, we can see that this extrusion should happen in other directions. So what I can do from the direction tab, I can click on this reverse direction. And when you click on it, you can see that extrusion is now happening in other direction. And for the thickness, what we are looking for is 10 millimeter. And you can see that we have 10 millimeter. So everything is okay. Now I click on okay. And I confirm this extrusion so now I have a second flange now in order to make the third flange we have two options the first option is to make the third flange exactly same as the approach that we used for the second flange completely modeling it or the other option is to use mirror command because it's easier to use mirror command I'm gonna use it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna click on feature tab and from the feature tab you can see that we have mirror command so I click on mirror command and here SolidWorks asks you to define mirror plane what plane do you want to use to mirror your feature so here I'm gonna click on the model tree and then from the planes that I have I'm gonna choose right plane as you can see the right plane is going through the origin of the geometry and this is a plane that we need to use so I click on it it's now activated here for the feature to mirror we have to choose the feature that we want to mirror and here you can see the SOLIDWORKS automatically selected that feature but if it was not selected you can simply click on extruded bus number two 
and then you can select it here and you can see the preview of the feature made here so now everything is ready I'm gonna click on the green check mark or OK and now I have the third flange in my model okay awesome so now we have everything in the geometry we have the final model it's time to check and see if our assumption was correct or not again we made an assumption it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work it's just a way to work around the problem that we had in this question which was not having enough information so let's go back to the question and see the total volume so as you can see the total volume provided in this question is 45,438 cubic millimeters that's a total volume so let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and check if you found this number or not in SOLIDWORKS in order to find a total volume I'm gonna click on evaluate tab go to mass properties and here you can see the total volume the total volume that I found is 46,036 cubic millimeter you can see that the difference between this number total volume that we found and the total volume provided in the question is not really significant but they're not exactly the same which shows that our assumption was not 100% correct. Again, imagine a situation that you are in an exam and you don't have that information. It's always wise to make the assumption and go ahead and find the answer because sometimes between the options that you have in a question, you can see that, oh, my final answer is cl really close to one of the options in a question. So you can simply select that and you get that score. So don't panic or don't say oh i don't have assumption i don't know how to continue with the question make a reasonable assumption and continue solving that question and again here it was my personal opinion that the question doesn't have enough information if you believe that i missed this part or there is information in a question that i kind of didn't see it please let me know in a comment i would be interested to learn it and know it from you guys but other than that, I think we're done here. Um, you know the approach, how to model this part. It's just about the fact that we didn't know what sort of angle we need to have the final fully defined geometry. But other than that, the approach is always the same. You can see that we have the model. If I look at the top view, let's, let's take a look at this view, for example. I click on this view, I click on normal tool, and you can see that this is view AA. It's really close and similar to what we see in the question. It's just we didn't have enough information and we couldn't make the fully defined geometry. And that's why our final answer is kind of off. It's really close to the final answer provided in a question, but not exactly the same. Okay, I think that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question or feedback, feel free to drop a comment below, especially about the assumption that we made. And again, thanks for watching. My name is Ruzbe. And I'll see you in the next videos.